Page one. We chant this together. It's, a, it's like an invocation. Invoke the mercy of the Supreme Lord and the disciple succession. Ready? Yes. Om Jnana Timirandasya Together Jnana Jnana Shalakaya Sakshunam Vitam Yena Tazmaya Sri Guru Devnama Sri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sapita Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamaya Dadati Swapadantikam Bandiham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamanam Shri Guru Bhaivam Sasha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagrana Ramanatam Vitam Tam Sasivam Sadvetam Savadutam Rajana Shaitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sagana Radita Sri Vishakan Vitamsha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpati Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastake Tapta Kancha Radhe Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vishyavanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpa Tuvyasya Kripa Sindhu Vaivacha Patitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnabe Vyo Namamama Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Dityananda Sri Arvita Gadadara Shri Vasa Yogura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Let's read the translation to the first one, two, three prayers. Okay? Together. I was born in the darkest ignorance, and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torch of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances unto him. When will Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada, who has established within this material world the mission to fulfill the desire of Lord Chaitanya, give me shelter under his lotus feet? I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my spiritual master and unto the feet of all Vaishnavas. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of Sri Rupa Goswami, along with his elder brother Sanatana Goswami, as well as Raghunath Das and Raghunath Bhatta, Gopal Bhatta, and Sri Jiva Goswami. I offer my respectful obeisance to Lord Krishna Chaitanya and Lord, Lord, Lord Nityananda, along with Advaita Acharya, Radha, Srivas, and other associates. I offer my respectful obeisance to Srimati Radharani and Sri Krishna, along with their associates, Sri Radhita Sri Shastra. Everybody is covered there. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada has introduced us to the really important people. <laughs> and as we always say, don't think of them as just dead. So it's because Nahanyate Hanyamahani Sharire. 
which is uh, no, when the body, <coughs> the, the soul is not destroyed when the body is destroyed. So they are eternal, and therefore we are invoking their mercy, their blessings. So, yesterday we did the first verse in chapter 4. <coughs> chapter 4 is entitled Transcendental Knowledge. So, today we shall do the second verse. Repeat after me. Evam param para praptam, Eva para para praptam, Imam Raja Shayo Vidu, Imam Raja Shayo Vidu, Sakali Niha Mahata, Sakale Niha Mahata, Yoga Nashta Parantapa, Yoga Nashta Parantapa. Evam param para praptam, Evam param para praptam, Imam Raja Shayo Vidhu, Imam Raja Shayo Vidhu, Sakali Neha Mahata, Sakali Neha Mahata, Yogo Nashta Parantapa, Yogo Nashta Parantapa, Evam param para praptam, Evam param para praptam, Evam Imam Raja Sayo Vidu, Imam Raja Sayo Vidu, Sakale Neha Mahata, Sakale Neha Mahata, Yogonishta Parantapa, Yogonishta Parantapa, Eva Parampara Praptam, Eva Parampara Praptam, Eva Raja Sayo Vidu, Eva Raja Sayo Vidu, Sakaraneya Mahata, Sakaraneya Mahata, Yoga Nasta Parantapa, Yoga Nasta Parantapa, Eva Parampara Praptam. Ivam Parampara Pratam, Ivam Raja Sayo Vidu, Imam Raja Sayo Vidu, Shakalaniya Mahata, Shakalaniya Mahata, Yoga Nasta Parantapa, Yoga Nasta Parantapa, Ivam Parampara Pratam, Ivam Parampara Pratam, Imam Raja Sayo Vidu, Imam Raja Sayo Vidu, Sakalinaha Mahata, Sakalinaha Mahata, Yoga Nashta Parantapa, Yoga Nashta Parantapa, Evam Parampara Pratam, Evam Parampara Pratam, Imam Raja Sayo Vidu, Imam Raja Sayo Vidu, Sakalinaha Mahata, Sakalinaha Mahata, Yoga Nashta Parantapa, Evam Parampara Praptam, Evam Parampara Praptam, Imam Rajo Sayo Vidu, Imam Raja Sayo Vidu, Sakalina Mahata, Sakalina Mahata, Yoga Nashta Parantapa, Yoga Nashta Parantapa, Evam Parampara Praptam, Imam Raja Shayo Vidu, Sakaliya Mahata, Yoga Nashta Parantata. That's it, what are you? Many others go. So, this is a very important verse. The Prophet will cite this verse in many of his lectures. Oh, here comes one. <laughs> <laughs> you want to chant it before we go to the synonyms? Excuse me? Do you want to chant this verse before we go to the synonyms? Which verse is it? Two. Four two. Four two. Evam Parampara Praptam, Evam Parampara Praptam, Imam Raja Shayo Vidu, 
Sakalin, Sakalin, Niamata, Sakalin, Niamata, Yoganasta Parantapa, Yoganasta Parantapa. Thank you. Synonyms, Evam, Evam, Das, Das, Parampara, Parampara, by the cyclic succession. By the cyclic succession. Pratam, Pratam, received, received. Imam, Imam, this science, this science. Raja Rishaya, Raja Rishaya, the saintly king, the saintly king. Vidu, Vidu, understood, understood. Sa, Sa, that knowledge, that knowledge. Kalina, Kalina. In the course of time, in the course of time, Iha, Iha, in this world, in this world, Mahata, Mahata, great, great, Yoga, Yoga, the science of one's relationship with the Supreme, the science of one's relationship with the Supreme, Nashta, Nashta, scattered, scattered, Parantapa, Parantapa. O Arjuna, o Arjuna, subduer of the enemies. Translation. This supreme science was thus received through the chain of disciplic succession, and the saintly kings understood it in that way. But in course of time, the succession was broken. Therefore, the science as it is appears to be lost. Repeat after me. This supreme science, this this supreme science, science was thus received, was thus received through, the through the chain of the cyclic succession. Through the chain of the cyclic succession. And the saintly king, and the saintly king understood it in that way. Understood it in that way. But in course of time, but in course of time, the succession was broken. The succession was broken, and therefore, and therefore, the science as it is, the science as it is, appears to be lost. Appears to be lost. Report by His Divine Grace, Shri <coughs> Prabhupada. It is clearly stated that the Gita was especially meant. For the saintly kings means the rulers, the rulers of the, of, the, of the world, because they were to execute its purpose in ruling over the citizens. Certainly, Bhagavad Gita was never meant for the demoniac persons <laughs> who would dissipate its value for no one's benefit and they would devise all types of interpretations according to personal whims. As soon as the original purpose was scattered by the motives of the unscrupulous commentators there arose the need to re-establish the disciplic succession. Five thousand years ago, it was detected by the Lord Himself, see, that the disciplic succession was broken, and therefore He declared that the purpose of the Gita appeared to be lost. In the same way, at the present moment, also, there are so many editions of the Gita, especially in English. But almost all of them are not according to authorized disciplic succession. There are innumerable interpretations rendered by different mundane scholars, but almost all of them do not accept the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
Krishna. Although they make a good business <laughs> on the words of Sri Krishna. This spirit is demoniac. Demonic. Demonic. Because demons do not believe in God. But simply they enjoy the property of the Supreme. Since there is a great need of an edition of the Gita in English, as it is, received by the Parampara, or the cyclic succession system, an attempt is made here to fulfill this great want. Bhagavad Gita, accepted as it is, is a great boon to humanity. But if it is accepted as a treatise of philosophical speculation, then it's simply a waste of time. So, <clears throat> what Prabhupada is saying here is true. This, this was when Prabhupada Gita was published. First published I'll tell you when hmm? anyway, at that time I know. In the, in the 70s, early 70s, there were over 500 English editions of Bhagavad Gita, as Prabhupada mentioned. <coughs> and he said almost all of them, they were not according to, they were not in line with the Parampara. And as Krishna says here in this verse, this is how the knowledge has to be received by the Sadhguru succession. It is preserved intact. Sometimes the example is given that just like this ripe mango at the top of the tree, and you want to get it intact. If somebody can climb up top and hand it down. When you get it, it won't have any bruise. Because when mango gets when mango gets falls to the ground, that part it hits the ground, it becomes soft and it, it loses the, you know, the the sweetness, the taste. So you know, you, know, you want to get it mango that has no bruises. <laughs> so, as Prabhupada says, many of the, most all of them, practically all of them, the commentators of these Bhagavad Gita, they, they are not, they don't follow this Parampara. And they speculate. They don't think, this means this, this means that, and this means that. <coughs> you will speculate like as if you will say the, uh, the five horses, Krishna's horses means this, <laughs> Arjun means that, and Krishna is as if they not <laughs> they didn't exist, as if Krishna is not a person. But actually, Krishna is a person, he is a green personality body. Just to see how bad it can get. Even Mahatma Gandhi, everybody knows who is Mahatma Gandhi, <laughs> right? He used to <coughs> walk around with a Bhagavad Gita under his arm and present himself as, as, he's, a student, as he's a student of Bhagavad Gita. But yet he writes in one of his books, I don't think there was ever a person like Krishna who ever existed. 
So Krishna is evaporated, he's, he's moved out of the... And he is known as... Yeah, what Mahatma? <laughs> He's not Mahatma. <laughs> There's two words in Sanskrit, Mahatma and Duratma. <laughs> you know? Who is Mahatma? Krishna says in Gita, who is Mahatma? Mahatma nas tumam partha daivin prakati mashvata. Mahatma means great soul. Atma, soul, maha, great. And Krishna says the Mahatma is the great soul. They're under the protection of the divine energy of mind. The, you know. And Mahatma, excuse me, Gandhi, amongst the, he would probably say, he is known as a saintly statesman. Saintly <coughs> statesman. He said, amongst the statesmen, among the politicians, they considered him a saint. <laughs> but amongst the saints, he was just a politician. <laughs> he didn't have the prophet wrote to him, the prophet used to follow him, actually. Because his movement was, it was sweeping kind of <clears throat> India. I believe he started here in South Africa. And that's built some momentum, then he went over to India. And because, you know, he, his mission was to drive the Britishers out of India. So he naturally got many supporters. But Prabhupada wrote him a letter shortly before he died. I've seen that letter. Prabhupada is telling him, you should get out of politics right now. Get out of politics, come and join me, we can preach Bhagavad Gita as it is together. <laughs> but he got no reply and shortly after that Gandhi was killed. And he wasn't even killed by, a, by the British. He wasn't even killed by the Muslims. He was killed by a Hindu. <laughs> People is fighting, pushing, fighting for to get independence. They killed him. So, he, you can't learn Bhagavad Gita from him. The prophet said, People who are speculating and writing and whatever, their Bhagavad Gita is a waste of time. <coughs> yeah. Why they do this? Because Bhagavad Gita is popular, it's well known, it's been around 5,000 years. And even longer we would be. We read last night in the first verse, Prabhupada gives the history of Bhagavad Gita. And how long? Remember? It was a millennium. Hmm? Millennium. More than a millennium. Millennium. <laughs> <laughs> he said in human society. I thought. Uh, nobody can remember? Who was here last night? You? No? You were here. Long time. <laughs> Krishna tells Arjun in the previous verse. That I spoke this science of yoga first time to the sun god Vivashan. And Vivashan spoke it to Manu. Manu is the father of mankind. And Manu spoke it to Ikshaku. And since that time, it's like <laughs> it's, it's really an incredible figure. Then you realize how what what how long this knowledge is. It's an as he said, it's an imper an imperishable science.
So the prophet says here, yeah, some two million, five thousand years ago, <laughs> man spoke, gave the Bhagavad Gita to his son and disciple, Maharaj Ikshaku, the king of the earth planet. So, this is how long. So, Prabhupada says, a rough estimate is that the Gita was spoken at least 120,400,000 years ago. And in human society, it has been existing for over 2 million years. See? So, it's um, <coughs> and it's, it's a proper cause, it's a science. What is the science of, of the relationship with, of the Supreme? Of living entities, living beings. We have a relationship with Krishna, but we've forgotten it. We don't know. So Krishna, he gave this science so that we can know. And then he detected 5,000 years ago that it appears to be lost because the, the cyclic succession is broken. It means commentaries that were not in line was being passed. And that was five thousand years ago. So what to speak of today? <laughs> when Prophet came, there were already so many Gitas, but not a single devotee was produced as a result of those Gitas. <coughs> not a single devotee and not a single not a temple. But when Bhagavad Gita as it is was presented, so many devotees came and so many temples came. So, therefore, when you get Bhagavad Gita as it is, it's, you're getting what Arjun got. <laughs> you're hearing it directly. It's, it's been passed down in disciplic succession. Without connection with disciplic succession, you don't know what you're getting. <laughs> and there are many. As Prophet said, they make a business out of a good business out of it. <laughs> he says, there are innumerable in interpretations rendered by different m mundane scholars, but almost all of them do not accept the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They don't accept Krishna as the Supreme. If Krishna is not the Supreme Personality of Godhead, if he, then what is the value of this book? If it's just another you know, philosopher or whatever. No. And because it is spoken by the Supreme Personality of God in himself, it's, it has important significance. Because what he says, this is truth, this is absolute. For all time, for all time. And this is beneficial <coughs> for all of human society. It's not just for one class of people, for everyone. And um, so, just as Krishna detected that the science appears to be lost, the disciple succession appears to have been broken. 
So he said, you will read that I'm in the next verse, you will say it. I'm now speaking it again to you, Arjuna. Because there's a need for this in human society. There's a need for it. And uh, therefore, Prabhupada was so kind to give a commentary that is true, remain a faithful commentary, faithful to the Parampara. You know, it's important get knowledge from the Parampara. So Krishna, he, he, re he started another Parampara with Arjun. <laughs> the first one he did was with the sun god. And the prophet said, so it is meant for the rulers This, the sun god, Nivashan, the sun is the king of all planets. We read yesterday in the All, every planet is dependent on the sun. We are dependent on the sun. How important is the sun? So important. So, therefore, Krishna gives it to the kings. What is the word Raja? Raja Shri. Raja Rishi means the king, but the saintly. Sometimes they call it <coughs> Rajarshi or Raja Rishi. The Rishis, they're saintly, and they're kings also. And they were the rulers of the, of the, of the, of the, of the earth, they ruled everywhere. Now, today, there's no more monarchy, kings are gone, more and more, but we have rulers still, right? Prime ministers and so on, presidents and whatnot. But they are not saintly in their character. They have no, so, how they will guide the people? Hmm? Somehow or other they get by popular votes, they get election. People think this is fair, but actually it's not. It's ridiculous. Because if everybody's allowed to vote, then the un unintelligent people, who do we vote for? And therefore you have, like in America, you've got, look who's the president. <laughs> it's a joke. How this man got elected? Because it's, he, he gets votes. By who? By fools. <laughs> Buddha. Yeah. So that is not a good system. Because when you get someone like that in charge, how will the people be benefited? How will the people be guided? What kind of leader is that? So Krishna had a plan for the rulers to hear Bhagavad Gita and rule based on these this, these teachings. That was his plan. <laughs> and it was important so much that when he detected it, oh, the parampara seems to be broken. I start it again. I speak it again <laughs> to Arjun. And so it's been, since then, it's been coming down. But as Prophet says here, yeah, there's a need for it again. So, who can give it again? 
only a devotee. The devotee can understand what Krishna is, you know, in a pure devotee. So Prabhupada wrote Bhagavad Gita as it is. And as I said, one, one time Prabhupada was asked by a reporter, <coughs> what is the difference between your Gita and all the others? And Prabhupada said, well, first of all, it's not my Gita. This is Bhagavad Gita as it is. <laughs> This is how, this is what Krishna says. We are simply presenting that, we are explaining that. Exactly what is there. That's why Prabhupada made his presentation is so nice. There's word for word synonyms given so that the, the scholars, if you're scholarly minded, you can see, you can look at the synonyms and see the translation and see how it, it's correct to that. And then you read the purport and you see, oh, he's, he's staying true to, to what the verse says. He's just explaining it, just breaking it down for us. Because we are not scholars. <laughs> right? He's presenting it. But many of the other trans editions of Bhagavad Gita, they speculate. Prabhupada likes to sometimes cite one famous, I think he was a president of India. His name, something, Badu Shastri. Uh, he, 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 he wrote a commentary in Bhagavad Gita. And he, <laughs> classic, he says, when Krishna says, Think of me. He said, It's not the person, it's not the person Krishna, it's to the unborn within Krishna. <laughs> Where did you get this idea from? I said, this Buddha doesn't know. There's no different, there's no different between Krishna's inside or outside. Krishna is his body, his body is transcendental. You see, he's thinking of Krishna as an ordinary person, an ordinary man, like us. We are different from our body. But Krishna is not like that. So he's thinking it's the unborn within Krishna. He's writing commentary on Bhagavad Gita. That's a waste of time. Not anybody can write. You have to, you have to be, you have to line, align yourself with parampara. You have to hear the knowledge from parampara, from someone who is qualified. Then you can give it. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Who was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's secretary? You know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's secretary was Swarup Damodar. Swarup Damodar. So, as a good secretary, he um, he screened everything. Any people would want to. People would write something and they want, to, or they want Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to see it, to read it. Somebody would write a poem or write a book or something. And they want Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to read it. <coughs> so Dhamma wouldn't just pass it to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He would, he would look it up, he would read it, see what it is they write. If it was, Correct, if it was in line with Parampara, <laughs> then he would let Chaitanya Mahaprabhu see it. If it wasn't, then he wouldn't. <laughs> so one time, Prabhupada tells this, this fellow wrote something and he says, I want Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to do this. And so down the I don't know who it is. 
There's two Bhagwats, the book Bhagwat and the person Bhagwat. So you got you have to get it from you have to study Bhagavatam from the person Bhagwat. Otherwise you, you can read and misunderstand. And that's why Prabhupada's purports are so important. He is explaining the Bhagavat. <laughs> You may read it, if you just read the verses and not read Prabhupada's purport, you can misunderstand what is being said. So, through Dhamma said, Bhagavata Stane, Bhagavata Paragya. You have to learn from hearing from someone whose life is Bhagavata. Then, otherwise, you, you cannot do it. So, same thing with the Gita. Is any scholar, anybody who writes a commentary of Bhagavad Gita, it's not the same as hearing Bhagavad Gita from a person who is a devotee of Krishna. Because you will, you will not, the real devotee of Krishna will not interject, <coughs> put any nonsense to what he thinks of. No, he will remain faithful to what Krishna said and what has been explained and passed down through the chain of the psychic succession. Therefore, this word parampara is so important. So important. It's, it's what it tells us what our what is what is our knowledge, what are these books we're getting from Prabhupada, what makes them so special, what sets these books apart from all other books. <laughs> because what you're getting in Prophets, in these Bhaktivedanta purports, you are getting the parampara. <coughs> Prophet will consult different commentaries by previous acharyas when writing his purports. So you are getting, you are getting, you he, he is giving you the parampara. You are connecting to this, so the real thing. And Krishna says, this is how, this is how it's begotten. If it's someone that's not in the parampara, not connected, then we, we don't know what you're getting. We don't know what you're getting. So, we, with, with confidence, we should study Bhagavad Gita. We can read the Bhagavad Gita as things. All the books that Prabhupada gave, they're all in line, there's no contradiction. With, there's no conflict or contradiction with the Parampara. So we, we have many, and it's not that there, there are scholars in within our reciprocal land, great scholars, <laughs> but they're devotees. <laughs> you see, they're devotees. Mukha Goswami, Nathan Goswami, all the six Goswamis, they're great. 
like professors <laughs> of spiritual science. The learned, highly respected. So they, they, they have the knowledge has been passed down by qualified people like that. Emotional and also learned. And prophets coming in that that line in this connecting us to that that quality of spiritual teachers. <clears throat> so we, 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 we know what we're getting is in line with them, is faithful. Prophet said if there's any credit you want to give me is that I have not changed <laughs> what I've heard, what I've gotten from my spiritual master. That's what I'm giving you. Prophet would always give credit to his spiritual master. The people would say, Oh, Swamiji, you've done such a wonderful thing. He'd say, But I'm not a wonderful man. <laughs> I should be following my Guru Maharaj and strictly what he says to do and to me. And therefore, I am having some success. So, as I, I told, I was telling you the word is today, Prabhupada was sending the word is young the word is one year old, two year old the word is out. Go out, open temples and different places, preach. And he said, Just follow what I'm saying. Don't, don't concoct anything. <laughs> if you do this, you are representing the parampara. So we can do that. You speak what, is, what you heard, what you read. And the potency will be there to give someone. In this way, the, the Krishna consciousness movement is expanding and still expanding. Still expanding. So, any questions? Thank you for the class. Mm -hmm. um, so the other, the previous acharyas like uh, Vishnu Chakrabarti Chakur and Baladev Vijayabhushan, even Pakistan to Saraswati, mm -hmm. um, they wrote commentaries on Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. And Prabhupada often takes parts of each mm -hmm. commentary and he, he, he phrases it, mm -hmm. and, and then he writes, and then he presents it in, in Bhagavad Gita as it is for mm -hmm. us. So is the reason why uh, we just don't use the previous acharyas' commentaries because it's too high for us to understand? Is that the reason? You could say that. For, they were writing also for a, a different time mm. with more qualified people. Yeah. And even about the Siddhanta Sarasu. Do you ever read his writing? <laughs> He would use the biggest word <laughs> he could find in the English dictionary. But even his own disciples, they, they, they couldn't understand what he said. They would go to a, a few of his disciples who were scholarly, educated. I said, what did Guru Mahal say? <laughs> and in this way they would get to understand it. So we, we cannot jump over, jump over the head of the spiritual master and uh, think we can, yeah. Of course, if one is a you know, very scholarly inclined, studious person and he studied all the prophet's books, there's no harm in him reading the books by Vishwanath Chakravarti and others. You know, he'll be able to appreciate it and get 
And as you read them, you would see, oh, this is where Prabhupada got that from. <laughs> Prabhupada, when he was doing his commentary, he would have the commentaries by these great luminaries who went before, and he would see, and he would choose which points that he want he thought would be good for us. And so he was faithful to it, but he was, he would, we would say, weave his commentary, including what the previous acharyas have said. You know, Bhakti Nathapa wrote the commentary, Balavimini, and the Vishwanath support to it. So, you have to think, Prabhupada is the first person to come to the West to present his knowledge in English. So, <coughs> he was, you know, and he, he understood how the Western mentality, he understood what to say to them. You can't say everything. <laughs> right? There's so much, but he, he, he selected, and then he gave, and just so when you, as I say, when you read Prabhupada's purpose, you are getting parampara, you're getting the, the, the commentary <coughs> of 